it could be it can happen for a lot of different reasons. It could be that your patient has a stroke. So it could be a TIA or a stroke that's causing the patient to pass out and lose consciousness. Basically, syncope is defined as having a brief period or a loss of consciousness because we have changes in cerebral blood flow. Okay, so we have changes in cerebral blood flow. What's causing that change in cerebral blood flow? First of all, obviously, a stroke or a TIA could be the thing that's causing the problem. Next, though, it could be cardiovascular in nature. Your patient could be having an MI could have heart failure or other kinds of cardiac conditions that are causing the patient to lose consciousness. So decreasing cardiac output could be the cause. Arrhythmias could be the cause. Okay, so arrhythmias could cause a patient to lose consciousness, which would look like possibly like the patient had a stroke. Okay, so we want to assess for that, get an EKG. Some of you mentioned with our case study this morning, getting that 12-lead EKG, probably a good idea on a patient who's lost consciousness, just in case, to find out if there is some underlying cardiac arrhythmia that is occurring as well. Cardiac medications. So many of our cardiac medications can cause a patient to develop hypotension, which could then lead to decreased blood flow to the brain, especially when we have advanced atherosclerotic disease up there, and then the patient could have syncope. It can also make a patient orthostatic. So orthostatic hypotension is when your patient goes from a laying position to a sitting position or standing position, and then they get lightheaded. Now this happens particularly in our elderly population because they have less control of their baroreceptors. See, normally if you were to get up right now and stand up, what would happen is the baroreceptors in your body, you have baroreceptors in the carotid bodies here in the aortic arch, and they would sense the change in blood pressure, and they immediately kick in the sympathetic nervous system and cause vasoconstriction down there and push blood up toward the heart and kick up your heart rate so you maintain your cardiac output. But you see in the elderly population, their baroreceptors are less sensitive. So they stand up, the baroreceptors don't sense that there's any change and they don't do anything, and then there's decreased blood flow to the brain and the patient passes out. Okay, so cardiac medications then can add to that problem by causing more vasodilation and maybe by blocking some of the sympathetic nervous system. For example, beta blockers, they block the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, so that can decrease the chance the patient's going to have good baroreceptor response that could be helping. Vasomotor. And this is just simply, you know, your patient passes out because they got up too quickly. And this could happen. I mean, obviously, it happens more often in the elderly because they have more problems with the vasomotor and the baroreceptor system. What can happen in any patient population? Volume depletion. So your patient is dehydrated. So we can look at the urine. We can look at the sodium. We can look at the patient's skin turgor, et cetera, find out if the patient is volume depleted. Maybe that's making the cause. Again, the elderly population is going to be more sensitive to this. They're more sensitive to even minor changes in volume and could cause the patient to have syncope. And lastly, maybe the patient had had a seizure, and that's what caused the change in the patient's level of consciousness. So syncope is one of the things we want to try to rule out as being the cause for the patient's change in level of consciousness versus this being an actual ischemic or hemorrhagic stroke. Delirium and dementia. Your patient with dementia comes into the emergency room with a change in level of consciousness. It would be very easy to attribute that change in level of consciousness to progression of their <laughs> dementia. Wouldn't it? As a matter of fact, we had a situation where a patient came in and the family kept telling the healthcare providers, this isn't her. Okay, you know, she's had dementia for a while now and she, we know what she's like. And the physicians kept telling her, well, you know, dementia progresses. And they say, look, she's forgetful. She's not unconscious. <laughs> right? <laughs> and as in a week's time, she's not going to become unconscious when she's just been forgetful for a couple of years. And still the physicians kept telling the family, no, you know, dementia progresses. <laughs> and then one day they're turning the patient and they find that the patient is, is just writhing in pain. About the only response they get out of the patient is the patient has pain every time she's turned. And they examine the abdomen and find out the patient's got an abscess and she's septic. Okay, now how could they miss that? 
In the elderly population, they may not mount the same kind of inflammatory response we see in other younger people. So you may not get the high white count, you may not get the fever and things like that that we normally associate with sepsis. Here the patient was septic. And you see the difference is that delirium is a metabolic thing and it's acute and it's treatable. Whereas dementia is the chronic, organic thing that's going on. So there's a difference in what's happening with the patient, yet the outward symptoms look very similar. And it's very easy, you know, when we're working in an emergency department, we see somebody come in and they've got a change in level of consciousness or they're combative or you have change of behavior or whatever the case may be. If we see dementia as part of their history, it's very easy to attribute all those symptoms to the dementia. But what we always have to di differentiate is, is this dementia or is this delirium? So we have to rule out all of these metabolic things that could be causing the patient to have to change the level of consciousness rather than it being the dementia. So here's a list of things that it could be. Sepsis being number one. Sepsis is the number one reason why your patient might develop delirium. So we want to rule that out. We want to get the cultures. We want to take the, get the white cow. We want to look at the fever, et cetera. But always be looking for sepsis. Uh, the elderly population, who is the population you're normally looking at for stroke anyway, this population is very at risk for sepsis. They have less immune function in their body. They're more likely to get an overwhelming infection. More likely to develop pneumonia and some of these things that lead to sepsis. Am I? You know that there's about 30% of our population that'll have a myocardial infarction and not have chest pain. There's a lot of theories why this happens. One of the theories is that the patient won't have chest pain because the pain receptors around the heart have been deadened over a long period of time. For example, your patient who has a diabetic neuropathy, so diabetic patients can develop like neuropathy around the heart where their heart muscle is not able to sense that pain and therefore the heart muscle doesn't respond with giving a painful signal and the patient doesn't have chest pain. So in other words, your patient's having an MI but not having any chest pain, but is having a change in the level of consciousness because of decreased cardiac output. Okay, so it could be cardiac in nature. Drug toxicity. Approximately 25% of emergency room visits for the elderly are due to drug, drug toxicities. 25% of your elderly patients who are coming to the emergency room are coming there because of a sign, symptom, et cetera, that they're getting from a drug toxicity. Now, this could be a variety of different things. Drug toxicity could be that the patient is on a drug that's disagreeing with them in some way. It can also be that the patient's taking something over the counter that has interacted with that drug. It could be that the patient forgot that they took their drug today and they took it five times, okay, so that they're taking a high level of the medication because they keep forgetting they're taking it. So there's a lot of ways that we can get drug toxicities, but drug toxicities are a very common reason why the elderly population comes to the emergency department. So drug toxicity would be another thing we'd want to rule out. 